Hi, I'm Jerry Brainham. I'm here to answer still another question. And, then, and this is, again, a uh, question that I, I hear or see frequently. You know, there's a creatine. It's about creatine. Without question, I would if somebody said to me, what's the most popular sports supplement? I would hesitate to say creatine. Coincidentally, creatine is also the most proven of all sports supplements. I mean, I could write a newsletter alone on creatine, this constant new research about creatine. Uh, what it does would take hours to talk about in a video, so I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm going to talk about today is, oh, I should also add that creatine is, is probably the most effective food supplement, too. It works for 80% of people who use it. Okay, what I'm going to talk about today, the question that I was referring to earlier, is what is the best type of creatine? And it's a salient question because, you know, we're bombarded with all these different types of creatine, the basic one being creatine monohydrate. What, cre what monohydrate means is a monohydrate refers to that it has a, a kind of molecule of water combined with creatine. In other words, basically it's, it's, uh, it's uh, creatine with, uh, with water. The actual uh, content of creatine in uh, in uh, in uh, creatine monohydrate, which is again the basic form of creatine, is 87.9 percent creatine. Uh, you know, uh, you, you see a lot of articles, or especially in the ads for uh, creatine, a lot of creatine products will claim to be uh, much better absorbed than creatine monohydrate uh, for various reasons. Oh, creatine, uh, I've, I've read uh, ads where they say that uh, creatine monohydrate, most of it is broken down in the gut and it never even gets to the muscles. That is complete, utter bullshit. Creatine is 99% absorbed, 99%. It is not broken down by acid in the stomach. That is bullshit, right? Now, you know, uh, I remember there was a form of creatine a couple of years ago called creatine ethyl ester, and the initial ads claimed that this form of creatine was 400% more absorbable. Let me tell you about creatine ethyl ester. The first medical journal article on creatine ethyl ester, well, let's call it CEE, was actually published in 1926. And, and what they found was that it was useless as a form of creatine because it was degraded very rapidly. Now, this was an in vitro study in a test tube, so they didn't really know how it reacted in the body. In 1955, another study came out I think it was an animal study where they did test uh, uh, in vivo or in body uh, pathway of creatine ethyl ester, and it was also found to be, the conclusion of the study, I should say, it was found to be useless, useless. It just broke down into the primary creatine metabolic byproduct, which was creatinine. Okay, so the uh, creatine ethyl ester was completely, the ads were completely false and misleading advertising. It's basically a useless supplement. Do not buy it. Then there's other supplements that also claim that to be superior to creatine monohydrate because of greater absorption and uptake. Uh, one of them, and I'm not going to mention the brand name, but you'll know it because uh, it basically is creatine compounded with baking soda. It's an alkalinized form of creatine. The uh, logic behind it is that the acid in the stomach degrades creatine into creatinine. And with this product, because of the buffering effect of the baking soda, you get greater uptake. However, this was tested in, in several studies, and it was found that the, the, you actually, when you, when you start to use a buffered form of creatine, you actually inhibit the normal uptake mechanisms involved with creatine. But in other words, it works in reverse. So what happens is the creatine that's buffered with the baking soda is more rapidly degraded into creatinine. So again, it's a kind of a wasted, useless product. All these other uh, forms of creatine that you hear about, uh, creatine pyruvate, creatine hydrochloride, creatine nitrate, they're all claimed to be better absorbed. Now, there's a grain of truth to that. Let's take one for an example. The, uh, the creatine form called creatine hydrochloride, which is basically creatine complex with hydrochloric acid. This is the same acid that's found in your stomach. And yes, indeed, creatine hydrochloride is the, probably the most soluble form of creatine. You know, in other words, it, it actually has, it's actually 60% better absorbed than creatine monohydrate. Now, my, this statement that I'm making, it might initially make you say, well, gee, 
I should use crea uh, I should get this creatine hydrochloride. It's 60% better absorbed than creatine monohydrate. But here's the key. Here's the point you have to remember. This is where the advertisements try to deceive you. They talk about creatine absorption, but that's creatine absorption into the blood. How much creatine gets into your blood is meaningless because what counts is how much creatine gets into your muscles. That's where the action is. You know, the, the fact that creatine hydrochloride is better absorbed and possibly gets into the blood in higher quantities than creatine monohydrate is nothing. It doesn't mean a thing. It depends on how much gets into your muscle. How much gets into your muscle is dependent on a certain protein called the creatine transport protein. And what stimulates the creatine, tra creatine transport protein? In insulin does. That's why they often suggest you take uh, carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates, or quick-acting carbohydrates to uh, increase uh, uh, creatine uptake because it stimulates the creatine transport protein. But the thing that actually tr uh, stimulates the creatine transport protein is a mechanism called the sodium-potassium pump. And as the name implies, what stimulates the sodium-potassium ATP pump, I should say, is sodium. Now, you might stop and say, wait a minute, does that mean I should increase my salt intake? No. There's enough sodium in your body to maximally stimulate it. And any so and you believe me, you're already getting enough sodium in your food. You don't have to take any supplemental sodium. Uh, so and if you take if you mix your pro, your creatine with a protein drink, the protein drink alone, or a fast acting protein like whey, for example, will stimulate enough of an insulin response where you don't even need to take carbohydrates. You could take your, your creatine with your protein drink and get a maximal uptake. Uh, the, uh, there's another form of creatine called effervescent creatine. Again, that was tested, shown to have absolutely no advantage whatsoever. It's a gimmick. Certain things help slightly, certain nutrients. There's a, uh, a substance called pinitol, which helps a little bit. Uh, there's a, a, a nutrient called alpha, alpha lipoic acid that helps a little bit, but nothing really drastic. That really doesn't make much difference. What's the bottom line? Okay, it's simply this. Don't waste your money on these exotic uh, creatine formulas other than creatine monohydrate. Most of them are based on hype. There's little or no research to show that they're better than creatine monohydrate. No matter what the ads say, don't believe them. I'm telling you the God on is true. Stick with the cheapest basic form, creatine monohydrate. If you do get any gastrointestinal side effects like cramps, stomach cramps, increase your water intake. Since creatine is an amino acid byproduct, it tends to draw water into the intestines. Can kind of it can lead to a, like a little localized dehydration effect. Simple antidote: just increase your water intake. That'll get rid of the cramps.